People vary in their estimates of how much life there is likely to be, how likely there is to be life on other planets. Some people think that, uh, some scientists think that um, as many as 10 million technologically advanced civilizations are out there. Other people feel that this life here on this planet is the only life that there is. But even on the most extremely optimistic estimate, it's still true that most of those worlds out there are going to be deserts. Most of them are not going to have any life on them at all, nor even any possibility of life on them at all. Now imagine a spaceship full of sleeping, perhaps deep frozen explorers, would-be colonists of another world. Perhaps they're the last population of Earth, despairing that Earth is about to be destroyed, sending out a colony to look for another planet anywhere in order to carry on humanity. Imagine that the spaceship turns out to be almost unthinkably lucky. It does chance to arrive at one of the very, very rare planets capable of sustaining our kind of life, a planet of the right temperature with oxygen and so on. The passengers wake up and stumble out into the light and they see a beautiful world of waterfalls, green leaves, mountains, coloured animals and bird-like creatures flitting about. Can you imagine how it would feel if you woke up, perhaps after a hundred million years of sleep in a spaceship, and found yourself on such a world? A whole new world, a world that you, such as you could live on, a beautiful world. You'd surely bless your luck in arriving on such a rare world, walk around in a daze, a trance, unable to believe the wonders that met your eyes and ears. Well, this will almost certainly never happen to us. And yet, in a way, it's just what has happened to us. We have woken up after hundreds of millions of years of sleep. Admittedly, we didn't arrive by spaceship, we arrived by being born. But the wonder of the planet, the dazzling surprise of it, is the same, whether we arrive by spaceship or by birth canal. We are amazingly lucky to be here, privileged. And we must not waste that privilege. Here, it seems to me, lies the best answer to those narrow-minded people who are always carping on about the use of science. The founder of these Christmas lectures, Michael Faraday, was once asked by the then Prime Minister, Sir Robert Peel, what was the use of science? Sir, Faraday replied, what is the use of a baby? She says her name's Hannah. <laughs> Faraday said, what is the use of a baby? And I've always thought that what he meant by that must be that a baby has such potential. It may not be able to do very much now, but it will be able to do a lot. But it's also possible that what Faraday meant was that there's no point in bringing a baby into the world if all that it's going to do is work to go on living, to go on living and work to go on living again. If that's all the point of life, then what are we here for? There's got to be more to it than that. Thank you very much. Some of life must be devoted to living itself. Some of life must be devoted to doing something worthwhile with, with one's life, not just to perpetuating it. This is, of course, how people quite rightly justify spending taxpayers' money on the arts and on conserving rare species. But sometimes when we justify academic science on those grounds, people get rather philistine and say things like, oh, so you think the government should spend money on your scientific research because your research is fun for you, do you? Fun isn't really the right word, is it? After sleeping for 140 million centuries, we have finally woken up in the universe. We've opened our eyes on a wonderful planet filled with colour, teeming with life. Before very long, we shall have to close our eyes again. Finding out about the universe in which we've woken up, answering questions like, what are we doing here? What is this universe in which we've woken up? What is life and what, if anything, is it for? Surely the enterprise that answers questions like that Science deserves a better title than fun. Put like that, 
doesn't science sound to you like just about the most worthwhile way in which you could possibly spend your short time in the spotlight? Now, of course, if you spent all your time wandering around the world gasping at everything and saying how wonderful, how amazing, uh, I've woken up after 100 million, million centuries, what a trip, people would think you were a bit odd and you might even get arrested. We do, of course, have an ordinary life to get on with. We do have a living to earn. We've got to earn our living being a solicitor or a lavatory cleaner or something like that. But nevertheless, it is worthwhile also from time to time shaking off the anaesthetic of familiarity and awakening to the wonder that is really all around us all the time. 